Uh, well, good evening. Thank y'all for coming. Uh, I want to uh, first um, begin by uh, appreciating the support of council in uh, the form of um, uh, Councilman Stamps for being here. Uh, I also want to thank uh, Public Works and uh, the CAO uh, for their presence. Uh, today's uh, press conference is to provide uh, clarity and to reiterate um, what we have been uh, saying all along as it relates to uh, what we've been doing as a city uh, ever since we were made aware of um, uh, actionable lead levels uh, uh, in January. So let me give you a little um, a, a background uh, that you are probably familiar with, but we want to make sure that we say this uh, so that you are uh, empowered with the right information so that you can articulate that. Uh, back in um, June of 2015, uh, the State uh, Health Department conducted uh, sample uh, testing on 58 homes. Uh, of the 58 homes, 13 of those homes were found, of course, to have uh, actionable levels of lead that's, uh, that were above what um, would have been recommended by the EPA. Uh, we were notified of this, um, uh, these actionable levels at these homes, not until January. And as a matter of fact, we were not notified about them until January 28th. Uh, and to be more specific, January 28th at 11.50 a.m. Uh, when we were notified, we immediately uh, dispatched uh, teams to those particular homes that were identified. Uh, we immediately started to initiate protocols uh, that are set forth by both uh, um, the health department as well as the EPA uh, when we have issues uh, of this magnitude. Uh, today, there was a press release uh, that went out that uh, sparked um, some anxiety among the community and in some cases some erroneous information. We want to try to deal with that uh, as categorically as I possibly can today. There was a news release that was uh, put out today by the Mississippi State Department of Health um, and to quote um, state epidemiologist Dr. Thomas Dodd, uh, he says, although the majority of home lead testing performed identified no lead or lead, or lead below the action level of 15 ppb, what we want to be sure that we articulate is that since the time that those tests took place and the time that we were able to have retesting done, we have seen, uh, I believe, six of those homes uh, come back with uh, actionable levels that were below, okay. excuse me, no that were no detection. The others uh, were, were lower, and we are still initiating those protocols that were set forth. So I want to be clear um, that the state epidemiologist himself says uh, that the city of Jackson, that those particular homes have seen uh, either no detection or lower than uh, the actionable levels. Um, that's the first thing. The second thing <clears throat> is that um, the state epidemiologists uh, issued recommendations uh, as a special precaution for young children and pregnant women. This is no different uh, than the city has been articulating through our public education uh, program that has been initiated ever since. Um, January 28th, when we began this conversation uh, with the health department. It is, again, a special precaution uh, because these are our children, these are um, our unborn children, and we want to be sure that we are saying loudly and clearly what, uh, what we believe uh, we should be doing to assist uh, citizens in the city of Jackson. Uh, the other thing I want to make sure that I uh, point out is the fact that um, the, uh, the State Department also says that they will closely monitor the city of Jackson's progress to reduce the corrosiveness of water. Um, what uh, that speaks to is the fact that between the time uh, that these initial um, test results were, were done and now, we've seen those levels reduced, which speaks to the progress that we have been making. Um, there has not been any notification to the city of Jackson that our water is unsafe. We have not received that from the Mississippi Department of Health. Again, these are extra precautions that not only the State Department, uh, the State Health Department, but also the city of Jackson uh, has been taking. 
I, I want to make sure that I'm especially clear. Um, between January 28th and now, the city has initiated the necessary protocols and have seen the things that we believe, according to those protocols, should put us in the right place um, uh, as it relates to what we're doing, and, and that data should prove that. Um, we are confident that had we received this information prior to January 28th, uh, that we could have uh, started some, those same protocols. Um, you have seen movement by the city council to initiate legislation uh, that would uh, make it incumbent upon the city to start doing that more often. So the city is not only being proactive uh, in terms of policy, but also legislation, uh, legislatively as well. Uh, not only in policy, but also in practice. I think that if anything needs to be said, it needs to be said that we have not received any notification that the city of Jackson's uh, water system um, is unsafe. And uh, we are, uh, again, uh, making sure that we express to you uh, that uh, we have been initiating these protocols since January 28th, the moment we received notice from the State Department. Uh, at this time, I'm going to ask um, Director of Public Works, uh, Ms. Keisha Powell, to come and talk to you more specifically uh, about the data, about the findings, uh, and about the science of this all. Ms. Powell. Uh, good afternoon. Um, I think the mayor has already uh, gone over what, we, what, we, what we've been doing since January 28th. And just to um, say again, we received from the initial 58 samples, compliance samples that the city was required to do, um, 13 of those um, homes were found to have actionable levels of lead. Uh, when we resampled, we started immediately with those 13 homes, and the data that we received back, I think I, we issued this in a press release uh, after we received those samples, and I'll, uh, I'm sure we, this is online already, uh, but the, uh, the red, bars are the, the lead results from June 2015, and the blue bars represent the lead results for those 13 homes um, from January 2016. So you can see the levels went down in the samples that we collected in January. Um, there were also, where you see no blue bars, uh, there were no detects at some of those homes. And uh, we did make the distinction that there was one home uh, when we tried to get a resample. Um, so I'm sorry, this is 11 that we resampled. Uh, one of those homes was vacant, and one we actually found where there was a, a high level detected was actually on a private well, so it wasn't the city's drinking water system. Now what we know is um, that in the course of, of of this happening in the summer after we did the test, um, we went back to our well system in part of the city. And um, we, as we indicated at the initial press conference, we thought that this was a transient event related to the water chemistry on that particular day. And uh, that we expected the results to, to come back better, which they did. Um, and that we, uh, we understood the concern because there are some similarities to um, Flint. And uh, nobody wants to say Flint, but I'm going to say that because there are some similarities. And the way that we've dealt with it is very different. That's not similar at all. The similarities are that they did change their water system. They changed to a very corrosive water system, water source. That, and they had no uh, corrosion control. In the city of Jackson, we have corrosion control. And we changed from a known water source to another known water source that we had been using for, for years. Um, our issue stems from the fact that our corrosion control system at the plant uh, needs to be upgraded, optimized. And um, that is simply so that we can maintain pH and alkalinity levels, which the health department referred to in their press release, throughout the system. 
And so the precautionary measures are for children and pregnant women, which is, again, information that we communicated because those in this particular case uh, would be what we consider the vulnerable population. But this is not a new issue. Um, the lead and copper rule has been in existence, and there have been many communities that have dealt with lead action level exceed exceedances across the country. Um, it's not until this uh, very severe issue in Michigan that there has been heightened sensitivity. And we believe that this presents the opportunity perhaps for uh, the health departments, EPA, and the CDC to look at this issue and figure out how to give uh, better guidance um, and, and, and some things that need to be tweaked in terms of the compliance sampling to get information to communities uh, much quicker so that those things can be dealt with. For the city of Jackson, we're doing just that. And uh, out of the 101 uh, sites that we sampled in this new compliance sample set starting in January, so not only did we test the 58, we also added an additional set um, to, to take us to 101 samples. We found 11 um, that triggered the action level and uh, we will be posting that data. We'll also be mapping that data. But what the data is showing is that this is still considered a home dependent event. Um, lead is leached from uh, either service lines that are lead or lead plumbing. Um, because we don't have a system wide problem, the data is not showing us that. Um, we, we are pretty confident that this is because um, the water chemistry is reacting with uh, lead-based plumbing. And so those precautionary measures, the flushing of your tap when you first run it, um, making sure that pregnant women and children are, um, are advised to take precautionary measures, uh, those are things to protect the public health. That's not to say that the city's water is unsafe and it has not been deemed unsafe. And um, we don't have lead in the water leaving the treatment plant. Um, so we will continue the public information that we, that we have to uh, issue. The, the brochure, which has the same language as Mississippi Department of Health's press release, is on our website. We have also hand-delivered or faxed or emailed that notification to all healthcare facilities. Uh, and other child care facilities uh, and anywhere else that ch schools where children would congregate. Uh, we have also hand delivered those notices uh, with the sample results to those homes that were sampled. And we will continue to issue, keep that public notification online. We've also put a notice on our water bills and we're also sending that notification all, uh, we have 70,000 being mailed out this week on the 25th to all of our customers to make sure that people are aware of the measures that you need to take. And I just wanna say that that public education uh, brochure from, uh, which is designed by the EPA has been in existence for a long time. And it is often used when there are, uh, when this action level is triggered. So that's not anything that is new. Um, the other thing I wanna say is that we will be sampling, um, the 100 sites will be sampling that more frequently than a year. We're doing that every six months, and we're also taking water quality parameter samples throughout our distribution system, and we're updating our site plan. We've also gotten an engineer engaged to help with the design of optimizing our corrosion control system so that we can get that optimized and in place, hopefully um, no later than the end of, of April. So um, those measures will work to protect uh, public health. But again, I wanna reiterate that the water leaving the plant is not unsafe. It does not have lead in it. Uh, we have People have asked about the discolored water. Um, that discolored water is not a result of lead being in the water. Um, that's a result of, of buildup in the pipes over time. Uh, these pipes are old. And so if you do see discolored water, as always, 
you can call us and we'll come out and flush and that should clear. If you run your tap and it doesn't clear, you can give us a call and we'll come out and flush hydrants so that that will clear up. Um, I don't have any more to say. I, I'm sure there's many questions, but before if someone you, else. Before then, I, I just wanted to uh, make sure that um, uh, we say it out loud and Stamps, you can come on. It, just over a year ago, or, or, or about a year ago, um, we made a plea uh, through an emergency declaration, uh, uh, which was our way of being proactive uh, about what we knew were imminent issues um, uh, with the city and with infrastructure. Uh, this conversation is a national one that Jackson, Mississippi is right in the middle of specifically um, as it relates to what's happening with urban centers. Uh, the issues that we're talking about today are um, happening high in, in high and more frequency uh, in areas that are urban, uh, in areas where there's been disinvestment, in areas where there's been flight in a lot of cases, and in areas where the particular city is blue uh, in the middle of a red state. And so we've, we, we really need to look at the politics uh, that are affecting our ability to make uh, safety a priority for our citizens. I'm going to uh, ask Mr. Stamps uh, to come now, and then we'll entertain your question. Mr. Stamps. Well, thank you, Mr. <coughs> Mayor and uh, Director Powell, for uh, your diligence in, in, in educating people specifically about the science of the issue. And thank you to Mr. Mayor for your leadership in this regard. Uh, we've talked a little bit about the similarities uh, between uh, Mississippi and Michigan. Well, what's similar is, the mayor alluded to it, you have a red state and a blue city. You have a, uh, a Republican governor and a Republican governor. You have a uh, majority black city and a majority black city. But the difference I see is we have Mississippians in our state leadership. Mississippians help Mississippians. And I believe our state leadership is different from the Michigan state leadership because there's been inaction by the state government in Michigan. And I feel that our state leadership understands that we're Mississippians as well. And I believe that they will look at this situation and choose action versus inaction in helping increase investment into the capital city. Because contrary to popular belief, Jackson, Mississippi is still the number one contributor to the state coffers every year as far as revenue. And it needs to have that same respect in return. We have issues, just like all cities do, but together between the local leadership and the state leadership, working together, not divisively, for the good of the people is what we need here. Um, the mayor pushed for an emergency declaration last year. Um, I've been pushing for one for a few weeks now, and hopefully we can move forward in those endeavors asking for the USDA, Department of Agriculture, to do the same things it did in Michigan. Increase the funding for lunch and school feeding programs. Uh, increase the funding for folks with WIC so they can purchase um, uh, formula that doesn't need water attached to it. Asking for HUD to come in to, um, uh, to make the same types of investment it made in Flint in Jackson, Mississippi. And also asking for Jackson, Mississippians to stop sending water to Flint. I can give you the addresses of houses right here in Jackson. We have issues, and together we can solve these as long as we can get over these, the race issues or the party issues and just start focusing on the people issues. Because the people issues is what matters. Not the party issues, not the race issues. We got people here who have problems who cannot afford to pay for filtration systems in their homes. That's all this emergency declaration was about. Will the federal government send direct investment. I don't know. You got Beyonce doing a whole concert and sending the proceeds to Flint. Well, we need the same type of attention to Jackson, Mississippi. Thank you. We're going to turn your questions now. Yes. Well, we're not doing anything any different than we've been doing. It's a part of our uh, education uh, program. It's a part of the protocols that have to be uh, initiated 
as a result of the actionable levels that we saw. And we've got to do it over a period of time based on those protocols. Um, that which that was ours. Yeah, yeah. I, now I can't tell you what I can't tell you what prompted the state. I'm talking about our press release and why we've been doing uh, what we've been doing. The um, uh, based on what I've read in the press release, uh, the uh, State Department of Health has engaged uh, EPA and the Centers for Disease Control. I would imagine. Uh, that because those recommendations came from the Center for Disease Control, that they felt that it was necessary to release those recommendations. But I think that they uh, talked with. And I just wanted to catch the other part of your question. Their press release um, says all um, and that's the same information that we have issued in the public notifications. Um, the special precautions are for small children and pregnant women because they would be considered vulnerable in this case because small children, um, they have smaller body mass. Um, and so the um, studies show that it impacts them um, to a higher degree. If you read in their, uh, I believe it's in their press release, they talk about, um, they try to put this in perspective. Um, I think it was in their press release. Oh. I'll have to find, I'll find the language in a second. Um, but it, there was something that said that this is like, these levels are like one drop of, of of gasoline and a whole tank of, of gasoline. While no levels of lead are acceptable, um, people or, or water systems have issued, and I've just read something on um, uh, another water systems website that we'll put in our frequently asked questions to, to give folks an idea of what we're dealing with here. Uh, levels uh, that were detected in Flint were in the 30,000 range. This is um, the, the highest level that we had was a two. And that's not acceptable. Um, no level of lead is acceptable. But these are, these are levels that are mitigated by us optimizing our corrosion control. The other part of your question about what prompted uh, their, and, and if they communicated to us, uh, they had communicated to us that they were going to issue a press release after they had further discussions with EPA and CDC because there is heightened sensitivity around the issue. So they're wanting to make sure that they're on record as having given the precautions that a health department should give. Um, we are following the, the measures that we need to take as a water system to advise our customers of the same precautions. And um, we're also doing uh, PSAs, and uh, we're going to be presenting this information at public meetings that we have. Yesterday's meeting was canceled, but we would have had those frequently asked questions at the meeting. So this is, it's not different information. It's not new information. Um, but they issued a press release as a, as a health department should. You should, you call this a event? You should the, ask the State the, Department. That would be a question for them why they are just. This press release came out before. And this is our third press release. Right. Should you call this a home dependent event, saying that it's a chemical mixture being caused by the pipes in the home? How certain are you that there isn't lead between the plant and the home? There is not a, it's not a, I didn't say a chemical mix, mixture. The, yeah. we, the, right, what the water chemistry, the makeup of the water. Um, because if there were issues with lead in our pipes between the plant and, um, and people's homes, then all of the samples would trigger. Right. We, and where we resampled, those levels would not have gone down and many and six of them went down to the point of no detection. So it is the water chemistry reacting with uh, the people's 
the, the home's plumbing system. And this is, people's home plumbing is out of our control. The control that we do have is to treat the water to a point where we have um, as little reaction across the city as possible. And that's, what, that's the point that we're trying to get to. So several years ago, when, or three years ago, when the city sampled, uh, we're going back and we're looking at those results and we wanna compare what changed between then and now um, to give us more idea of what's, you know, what's going on in, in, in what parts of the city, what homes. Um, but over time, these systems, uh, they become less effective and you have to upgrade them. And that's the situation that we're in now and that's the investment that the mayor and, and councilman uh, Stamps is talking about is needed in this case. And that's across the country. Some of these people are low income. How do you you have to replace all the pipes underneath their home to have it safe for the chemical not to well, cause some kind of reaction? We have, um, we've, we've provided some, we have developed a list of frequently asked questions. We were in the process of finalizing those uh, frequently asked questions and in that list um, there are uh, filters that one can get for the tap. Um, you can also change your faucet um, if you could call a plumber out to just make sure and check your home plumbing. Um, but then flushing the tap, some of these home, uh, homes that were sampled, when our staff asked where they were taking the sample from, there were two homes where samples were taken which had high levels um, or the higher levels where those folks hadn't been home in days. And so their, their water plumbing, they, they weren't using the water so it was sitting in the pipes. So that first flush um, captured a high level and, and you want to get the high level triggered when you do the first flush to get an indication. So we know that flushing, the, uh, flushing your tap, allowing it to run, not cooking uh, with hot water, but running cold water from your tap, allowing it to flush, and then using that for cooking um, will, will, will resolve the issue. The other thing is, is we also are um, engaged with Green and Health, Healthy Homes Initiative, whose primary focus uh, is around lead-based paint, but we've been working with them uh, to formulate an application, a grant application, uh, and in that grant application, we'll be requesting funds to assist those particular homes that we've identified with that. Uh, so our game plan not only includes what we're doing on the city side, uh, but also how we can look at assisting low income. And, and let, me, let me just be frank, we're talking about 70% of the housing stock in the city of Jackson that is before 1978. And as a result of that, the same standards that exist now concerning lead and lead plumbing did not exist at that time. Uh, and in addition to that, we're talking about a population uh, in the city of Jackson who's already struggling with uh, affordability with water um, as a result of several things, including um, uh, mandates, federal mandates that we're under without any funding. Uh, I spent um, uh, a little time today with the superintendent. Um, he and I will uh, wrap back around uh, today. We want to be sure that I had had an opportunity to meet with the team uh, before we were sending out um, uh, any kind of information in silos. So we wanted to make sure that we made one clarion uh, declaration about what's happening uh, so that that message can be uh, um, uniform. Well, the, we, have, um, we had an annual report or an annual inspection done in November or December timeframe. I believe it was November. And so in that uh, annual report, they note the things that, that the city should look at upgrading. 
and um, the corrosion control uh, or the lime feed system at the plant was one of those um, was one of those items. The city itself had submitted a um, for the state's intended use plan for funding for upgrades at both of our water treatment plants and in the system back in September. So um, it is as a matter of course and uh, what we have been talking about this last year and a half that I have been here, um, there is a need to upgrade our water infrastructure across the board, pipes and at the treatment plants. What we did not know, however, was that um, the, the levels that we were, uh, that the pH levels and the alkalinity levels from the plant were causing this issue because we didn't get the sample results back until January. Um, we, on a day to, from a, on a day-to-day -day basis, we look at the pH levels and alkalinity levels and we're sampling constantly at the plants every day and we have target ranges that we're trying to stay within. Um, what is acceptable for water is generally, I believe, a 6.5 on the pH scale on the low end and an 8 or 8, eight and a half. And we have been between a 7 and a 7 and a half to an 8 or an 8 and a half from the plant. It de it's depending on um, the, the efficiency of the system. And um, sometimes the lines get clogged when you're injecting the chemical in the water. This is getting very technical. But, and and the, the operations staff deal with that. So in terms of upgrading, we're looking at a system um, that is less maintenance intensive, or we will be, and one that is making sure that we get the, the pH level of the water leaving the plant up. And that will, that will help address this issue. <laughs> well, those are, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, we've got, we, we are required to have an engineer design and do the corrosion control studies, and um, the estimate that we've received back is about 400000 for those services, and then we're probably looking at close to half a million dollar of investment for upgrade of the, uh, of the corrosion control treatment at one plant. And we're, we're looking at all of our facilities to make sure we're covered across the board. It's paid for through water and sewer funds. So the uh, money that- Or direct that, investment from other levels of government. Or direct investment from other levels of government. Will, I believe that the city of Jackson sits in the state of Mississippi, and the people of Jackson, black and white and Democrat and Republican, need their state leadership to choose action versus inaction, choose people over party and race, help our state move forward. Samples were taken June 2015. Samples were articulated to the city of Jackson on January 28th. 2016 at 11.50 a.m. So, by the state of Mississippi. If the, if the governor's office wants to say that the water system of the city of Jackson is only the city of Jackson's responsibility, is he asking we shut all the water off at every state building? What is, I don't know exactly what is being asked of us here in that statement, but what I am saying is they will choose how they were labeled in this situation. Their actions or inactions will tell you exactly how they feel about you. June 2015, samples were taken. January 28, 1150, those samples taken by the state of Mississippi were articulated to the city of Jackson. Between January 28th and now, the city of Jackson has initiated every necessary protocol. The city of Jackson has done every necessary action we have done the public education, have continued to. Ross, we have issued three press releases, not one. 
And those three press releases, those are three, I'm not sure. This is the first time I've seen a press release uh, with this logo on it. And, it's, and this, you've received three of these now from the city of Jackson. And we will continue to, um, whether or not the city of Jackson is considered a part of the state or not, uh, the city of Jackson's uh, citizens and customers are our responsibility. Right. And we're going to take responsibility for those, whether we walked into this or whether we inherited it or not. Uh, they're our responsibility, and we'll do whatever we can uh, to find the funding in order to ensure that the citizens here are taken care of. So in that statement, um, like I said, the state leadership will be telling the people, both black and white Jackson, both Democrat and Republican Jackson, how it feels about all of them. Thank y'all. Bye. Have a great day. Do I get